All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Code of Bears Lunch Learn on MABS. As always, these meetings will be recorded so that you can watch them on our YouTube channel later. Um, if there are any questions, please type them into the chat as everyone is muted to prevent background noise. We will answer all of your questions at the end of the presentation. And now I'll turn it over to today's presenter, Chase. How's it going, everybody? Uh, today we're going to be covering uh, Microsoft Azure Backup Server. <clears throat> uh, so what is MABS? Uh, MABS is Microsoft's cloud recovery option. It works with both on-premises and Azure VMs utilizing Windows Server OS. The main benefits for using MABS are making file and folder backups, Hyper-V or VMware full VM backups, and they have the option for offline backups. Uh, the Hyper-V VMs can be backed up in a cluster with the CSV storage. Um, this allows you to back up the VMs on a cluster shared volume storage, or CSV. Um, it allows for host or guest backups. Um, if the agent is installed on the host, so the virtual host, um, or cluster, it can protect all the VMs and the data files running in those VMs. Uh, at the guest level, it means the agent is installed on each individual virtual machine and it protects the workload on that specific machine, but not total all of, or not all of the VMs. <clears throat> Both methods have their pros and cons. The host level backups, um, these are flexible because they work regardless of the type of OS running on the guest machines or the agent or on the virtual machines, and don't require the installation of the MABS uh, server agent on each individual VM. This will save you money uh, in the cloud, um, as well as save your network time with uh, backups. Um, if you do deploy the host level backup, you can recover an entire VM or, or just the files at an item level recovery, um, but you cannot do both. <clears throat> For the guest level backup, um, useful for protecting specific workloads on specific VMs, um, but you can't get the entire stack um, backed up or protected. Um, at max, recovery points can occur um, once a day with a max of three. There's no in between, um, or there's there's no higher cap or um, that's allowed as of right now. Uh, The offline backups, uh, they have two different options. You can do the Azure Data Box, which is a pre-configured device that Microsoft will send you to store data on. You will then send that device back to the Azure Database Center, um, where they copy your data and um, send it to the cloud to your provided storage account. <clears throat> um, and then that is uh, copied to your de designated recovery service, which is allocated in the Azure portal. Um, and then the, the base, so the Azure Import and Export Service, this is similar um, to the Azure Data Box on how they recover or how they send your data to the cloud, except it us utilizes a SATA disk and makes it a little bit easier for smaller server data centers to gather this offline data. Um, some cautions to be aware of is, seek, uh, is MABS allows for SQL backups, um, but if you're utilizing maintenance plans, we recommend that you don't utilize the MABS SQL um, server backup uh, and instead just back up the folder that you're sending these backups to. Because if you take hourly or transactional um, backups, these point in time backups have flags. And if these flags are broken, uh, you'll lose that point in time recovery for the remainder of the day from when that backup was taken. Um, and it'll start back up once the next BAK file is run. But if you have daily backups running with the MAB server, you'll continually lose that. So we recommend to pick one or the other. You can either run the MAB SQL server backup and have that individual BAK file or continue with your transactional and point in time recovery and back up the files from the drive itself. <clears throat> MABS has three options for replication. There's locally redundant storage, and this is the lowest cost option with the basic protection against server rack and drive failures. Um, it's better for non-critical scenarios. 
<clears throat> there's geo redundant storage or GRS. This is the inner is one intermediate option. has a has fail over capabilities <clears throat> in the secondary region, but is best and is best for backup scenarios. And then there's zone redundant. This is the this is the second intermediate option. It has protection against data center level failures, and it's better for high availability set or scenarios. <clears throat> um, Mabs uses what are called delta blocks, and they <clears throat> this is how Microsoft determines what data needs to be backed up to minimize and increase minimize bandwidth and increase performance overall. Um, the delta blocks will tr tr uh, take the backups of the files of only the files in the location that you select. It'll only take the backups that have changed. So any files that have had updates um, or data transfers, um, those are what the Delta blocks are looking for and those are what will be sent to the cloud from your server rather than it just taking the entire folder every time it takes a backup. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna go into a demonstration now of how the server agent works. Now let's go back to port two. So this is our sandbox server that we created for Mabs. <clears throat> and on the home screen, this is the item that you're going to be looking for when running Mabs. <clears throat> this is the server agent. And here's the home view that you'll see. It lets you know after each job is completed um, and what's occurred during those times. Here you can see some warnings of a job that didn't complete. This is when the machine was off. On the right hand side, these are the actions that you can take. <clears throat> you can register the server. This is where you're gonna register your um, Azure server in the cloud, your uh, the backup area. And then you can schedule your backups here. Um, you can create a system or you can modify. We're gonna modify the one that I have created uh, and then we'll make changes. And then you can see the folder, you can add items here. You can remove items um, to change what you want backed up or if you want multiple drives backed up. Here you can specify if you want day only and it'll run one time a day and you have to manually select it three times. Or you can do the weekly and select the days that you want it to run on continuously. And then here you can set your retention rate. <clears throat> um, you can modify these however you want. And this is how long they're going to stay in the cloud for. And then here's where you're gonna confirm the files that you want or confirm everything. And then you just click finish and it saves the schedule. <clears throat> And then you can also back up immediately with the backup now. And it'll instantly, it'll take you here. You select the drive that you want to back up, uh, where you want to retain the single backup to, how long, confirm it, and then it'll back it up and it'll show you the progress bar. And then you can recover the data. This is where you will select where you want to recover your data from. Um, in the cloud, you can take whatever you want and bring it back down. This will mount a drive into your files. Um, you'll have a mountable disk here, and this is where you'll copy the items that you have selected from the cloud to be backed up from. <clears throat> um, that is all I have. Are there any questions? <clears throat> Okay, I'm not seeing any questions coming through, Chase, so I think we are good. Uh, so that will conclude our Lunch and Learn today on MABS. Um, we hope to see you again next week. Thanks, everyone.